but I am so happy right now. Not only because our national pastime is finally in full swing, and along with the crack of the bat, you'll hear the snap of a camera or two, and someone who has been behind that snap for almost 11 years is my good friend Tabitha Soren. Back in 2003, she started taking photos of the Oakland Athletics draft class for her husband, Michael Lewis, in his landmark book, and that became, uh, of course, a hit movie, Moneyball, and it's a hit book. It's really good. So following those players through their hits and misses, Tabitha compiled her photographs and printed them in a new book called Fantasy Life, Baseball, and the American Dream. And here she is to discuss. And moving from in front of the camera at MTV to behind the camera and all the Oakland A's in between. Welcome. This is It's so magnificent to see you in this context. For me, too. I am so proud of you. This book is amazing. You are an extraordinary photographer. Uh, you met these people when you were shooting them for your husband's book. One of the most interesting things about Fantasy Life is documenting the decline of athletes. As you pointed out at your book signing, we rarely do that, but it's such an interesting part of the story. Well, there are so many of them, and they are in decline at an incredibly young age. Yeah. You know, 30. That doesn't mean their life is over. And this was a long-term project for you. I mean, this, this took a number of years. Did you know that this book was going to be the end result? No, I don't know anything about... I mean, I know a little about baseball now, but I didn't then. Yeah. And I wasn't a huge baseball fan. But what I was a fan of was the hope and purpose that was in these guys' eyes. And they were all on the same journey. They were all starting at the exact same time. And I thought, well, eventually they're going to differentiate themselves. Yeah. And I thought that they were really the winners because pro athlete or pro ball had signed them up yeah. but in fact it became a story about losing the one thing that gives your life meaning yeah and what are those consequences now it's interesting because you were the one person in my life who told me like don't get caught up in fame don't get caught up in the celebrity which was very easy to and do and here we both are in the <laughs> 90s at MTV but no it was because of the conversations that you and I had about that and you were the one who told me go live an interesting life I wrote an entire chapter in, in, my, in my book just about that and that's what gave me the courage to leave MTV and to move to Seattle and start a totally different life which you did as well. I did. That's true. So wisdom from a 24-year-old is probably not something that, you know, but you were probably, I don't know, 16. So yeah, that was it. I think that, uh, I think it is important to not get caught up in the fantasies that America tends to fortify with yeah. people. I mean, they all think that being on reality TV is going to, you know, give you some happiness. The baseball players think once you get it, get to the majors, you're going to have a lot of money and success, yeah. and that's going to provide happiness. But the fact of the matter is, many of them get there and they are auditioning every single night for a chance in the lineup the next night. They don't necessarily feel secure on their team, depending on what part of the trade they were in. And you really do have to figure out that there are parts of your identity that that are connected to your soul and yeah. not to your job. And it's, it's and really difficult to flesh And that's what I was trying to, to stress out. with you. Yeah, and, and you found that as well. And you moved to Northern California, and you had three beautiful children and a, a great husband, and you guys are smart and interesting. And, you know, the fact that this I should book, have you around all the time. No, but the, the book is, is such a great metaphor for your life and, and not running away from the things that define you and constantly redefining yourself. Well, thank you very much. That's a very holistic view. In 1992, during the presidential race, uh, when you were instrumental in redefining how we look at politics in this country through the MTV Choose or Lose campaign, did you ever think you would see a crazier campaign in 92 like we saw in 2016? No, absolutely not. I think that what we were trying to do at MTV was take the votes of young people seriously so that they would then take them seriously. So I really feel like we were trying to educate them and get them on the same page so that we could then go forward with some more complicated stories and more depth. I mean, yeah. there were some packages that were very simple, just explaining the difference from, between a caucus and a primary. Mm -hmm. But I think that no one, no matter how educated they were, could have anticipated what happened in this last campaign. Uh, Tab the Thorn, Fantasy Life, there it is. Wee! It's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thanks, Kennedy. So nice to see you.